強豪締めポーランドの最前線で活躍前へ前へと突き進むドーモーファイトで敵を粉砕するグランプリ開幕にふさわしい殴り合い削り合いテオドラス・オクストリスリトアニアシモン・バヨルポーランド Here we go, the first fight of the Side Games presents Ryzen Fighting World Grand Prix 2016 Open Weight Tournament. Now, the first two rounds are five minutes. If for whatever reason the judges determine that this is a too close of a fight, they cannot determine a winner. We go to an extra round where the judges will only judge the last five minutes to determine a winner. And walking to the cage right now from Poland. Is Simon Bayor. Yeah, I am really, really excited about this tournament, man. Obviously, being a heavyweight, watching all these guys come in. Now, Simon's got a, a bit of a weight advantage. He's about uh, 20 pounds heavier. You know, both men are standing at six feet tall, even. It's his first time competing in Japan. He's a father of two kids, one seven year old and one 13 month old. Loves to ride his motorbike. Uh, loves to train with his young son, his, his seven-year-old son.、Um, he understands that his opponent tonight,、uh, Theodoros Auskutiales, will likely be faster than him, but he's well prepared for that. Yeah. And he's coming actually from a really good organization in Poland, KSW, which I've only heard fantastic things about.、Uh, and really, just that organization is just huge over there. He says he loves the tournament format. You asked him the question, Flano, what do you think of the tournament? And he smiled ear to ear. He said he absolutely loved it because it brings back an air of natural selection. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he did say that. I don't blame him. It's true. I mean, you can be, I mean, for anyone that's ever done wrestling, judo, or any sort of martial arts, to go through a tournament format,、um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's myself that I, I, I feel old school, but tournaments is how it all started, especially in North America. We saw it so many times from Shuto to Pride,、uh, just to everything in mixed martial arts. And now Rising is continuing the theme of the tournament. And, and, and I think it's right, it does bring back a certain era of, of, of natural selection. Who is the best? And now he's taking on a gentleman by the name of Theodorus Auskultis from Lithuania. Yep, wearing the gi, reminiscent of Street Fighter, Ken. Yeah, right, absolutely. And we see, and Theodorus actually had a fantastic performance back in January、um, in the Grand Prix, losing to Yuri, who we're going to be seeing him fight later. But man, this guy is really, really awesome to watch. No, what's really awesome about him is that he's a beekeeper. <laughs> He is a beekeeper on the side. You can literally look him up on eBay, place an order for your jar of honey, just look up, quote, the lounge of honey,、yep. end quote. He started this as a hobby seven years ago, and it just kept getting bigger. He has 40 hives now, and yes, Keith Herring, he has been stung over a thousand times. Oh, easy. He says every time, what, 14, 15 times every day, he says. I, listen, you guys were mocking me during the interview because luckily I've never been stung by a bee. I can only imagine, let alone being stung over a thousand times. <laughs> Started training judo at the age of eight, migrated to mixed martial、yeah. arts at the age of 16. Here's how the two gentlemen match up the youth factor going to the Lithuanian.、Uh, obviously, not much of a height difference. The weight, obviously, in favor. Uh, of the Polak, but I'm so looking forward to these two guys finally getting this Open Weight Grand Prix underway. Tadaima Yuri, Musabets Q Tournament, Ikai Sen, Daich Shiaio Okonaimas. Our corner, Haku Hachitu Botenji, Haku Tu Ichten Lokyo, Simon Bayo. Now, from my video on Teodoro, and I've been seeing him fight several times, 
he's really, really aggressive, a really good, more of a uh, stand-up kind of karate background. I haven't seen much on Simon. Uh, I don't know about his ground or stand-up ability, but uh, I definitely see Theodorus to come out really aggressive, really strong, and fast. That look that you see right now on Oxiolos' face has been the same look from the moment he arrived in Japan. Yeah. Very, very intense. Absolutely. A lot at stake here for both gentlemen. They're kicking off this Grand Prix. A lot of eyes are paying attention. Nice. A nice combination there, a five and a three. Right up cut. And Theodorus has shown uh, quite a bit of ability. He's very, very quick on his feet. But, you know, this weight disadvantage, this is something I kept asking the lighter fighters in the tournament is, are you worried about the about the weight disadvantage? But, and they, none of them seem to really uh, be worried about it. But I think now you're going to start seeing that. Simon is doing a great job here using his distance. And the minute Theodorus moves forward, he got the jab, double jab, and he follows it up with that right hook if Theodorus moves the wrong way to his left. Yeah. Well, that extra 20 pounds on those punches makes a difference. Nice. You can hear these punches. My goodness. And Teodoros is a little bit waiting on him. He, he seems to be a little bit more of a defensive fighter. He's kind of waiting for, or uh, Simon rather. He's kind of waiting for, uh, for Teodoros to come in and close the distance and then counter off of it. Another attempted uppercut there by Teodoros. Nearly, nearly landing. Oh, nice. Simon's doing a really, really good job with that overhand kind of right hand. Another uppercut there. That is something, obviously, that he has trained for uh, in this fight here. It's something he's must seen or must have seen in the way that Bayor stands. Well, and you, and, and you see that a lot with a smaller, littler guy. They try to get inside, and from inside, from, from the shells, they, they call it in boxing, he tries to come up and throw that uppercut. Um, and Simon's doing a good job of trying to counter that by coming over with the overhand uh, looping hooks and getting them out of that pocket, keeping the distance. And right Theodorus now at times is moving to the power side. Correct. Well, that's, and, and that's why Simon keeps throwing that looping overhand right, is as he's inside in the pocket, it's, it's knocking him out and he's able to counter it and, and take an angle. Of that. And we see both men just kind of taking the time, kind of feeling each other out. We haven't seen many kicks at all. Um, Simon's putting his hands down very, very early. Uh, he, he's, he kind of started off with him at waist height. Oh, oh nice. beautiful punch landed there. He smells blood there. He's going to yep. keep throwing that right there. And here we just see the size advantage from Simon. He's able to, he's able to really use that, that weight and that pressure to keep Theodorus up against the ropes. Do you think he was baiting him by bringing his hands down? And as soon as Theodorus attacked, boom. Perhaps. I, you know, I, I think that's more of a fight style. He's kind of a chest level uh, guard. Um, and especially with this one. Uh, these guys are really down more of a head level. Yeah. 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 Not something I would suggest doing. No, not at all. But uh, if you're the shorter fighter like Theodorus, are you thinking of throwing some sort of combination where you do end on the body? trying to get on the inside and trying to land a shot. But he's just not able to, once he gets inside, he capitalizes. And that's what Simon's doing a really good job of right now. Once he gets inside, he pushes him away and steps back. And, and lands a big shot as he comes in. So now you're seeing Theodore start to slow down a little bit. He's not, he's not coming in as hard as he was early, as early on. Simon's doing a good job. He's, he's starting to use that jab a little bit more. Now he's baiting him there, absolutely. When yes. he's dropping that left hand, he is baiting him and biting him, trying to come in. Um, I think he's, and he's starting to kind of get get his speed here, get to feel, feel a little bit more comfortable. And we did mention that Ryzen that they they do score, well, we do score on damage here, and we can see the left eye of Theodorus has a bit of damage there, but right, pretty much smack dab in the middle of Simon's forehead, we do see a cut. And we're seeing that combination work really, really well for Simon right now. He's doubling up on the jab and, and following up with the right over and right. And Simon also seems to have a little bit of cut right in the middle of his forehead. 
time to close the distance, putting them up against the, the ropes. And this is something we don't see a lot in the States with the cage. The corner actually is, you're able to trap guys in the corner and close the distance and try to keep them out. Um, you know, you know, Simon did a pretty good job of that, but now he's, he's kind of let, let Tiodor back out in the center. Oh, man. Good combinations thrown there by Simon, but it was a nice little stick jab there mm -hmm. from Tiodor before that combination. The, but obviously, the man who won that exchange was obviously Bajor. Right. And I think, and this, I think this is, you're seeing the weight advantage at this point. <laughs> He doesn't have to beat him on speed. He just has to land the heavy shot. And I think he's starting to figure that out. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> See? He was winning those exchanges. That's one of the oldest things I learned a very long time ago. Don't worry about how many punches are being thrown. Who wins that exchange? Right. No, we're see, and I think as we see the round progress, we see uh, Simon really starting to step in, starting to understand and use his size and his, and his weight advantage in those situations. Here we go. We're seeing again the jab, and then... Oh. That's the uppercut that finally landed yep. for him that he was throwing from the beginning of the fight. Good for Theodorus. Now, Mr. Herring, on your unofficial scorecard, do you score that for Simon Bayor or Theodorus right Axiolis? Right no, it, absolutely. That, that's a round for Simon. Um, under the criteria, I would say he definitely with damage. Um, the aggression I would have, have almost equal on both both fighters, and I would say control definitely goes to Simon. Even though at the beginning, uh, probably the first quarter of the fight, I would give to Teodoros in, in the uh, control situation, but Simon was able to turn it around and come at him. Now they're not working that left eye, as you can see there. There is some swelling underneath, or at least in the top of the orbital bone. But both those guys are just sitting there. They're sucking back wind. There was a lot of exchanges, a, a lot of power at the end there. Absolutely, the whole round. Round number two, Psy Games presents Rise in Fighting World Grand Prix 2016 Open Weight. And we saw Vanderlei Silva obviously paying close attention, likely taking some notes because he has a bye and he will be competing in this tournament. And here we have, it's, it's really, the problem with Tay Doris, he's, he's dropping his head as he's coming in. So he's, miss, he's missing his shot. He's losing sight of Simon. And Simon's done a really good job of kind of staying on the outside and throw that hook. But he doesn't have, he's not throwing any straight shots. They're all looping, looping hooks that he's landed with. Let me throw this at you, Herring. If you look at the way Simon stands with his left leg, yes. very heavy on his left leg, are you throwing <laughs> some right kicks as we show the axe murderer? Well, and, and in, yes, absolutely. But once again, we're not seeing Teodoros. He hasn't worked it at all. He, has, he should have started that early on in the first round. He's wanting to duck, and come in, and really for Simon, a, a knee, setting up a good knee, if he was able to kind of clinch in that position and throw a right knee or a back knee, um, it would be really, really dangerous. So you're saying if Axiolis gets aggressive, clinch, well, as he does. Right, here's a takedown attempt here. No, as, as, as Teodoros is coming in, if someone's really trying to sit up a back knee, it would be a really good way to kind of slow down. Simon, of course, now getting on top. So he gets the takedown here. Does he want to stay in this position here and ground and pound, or does he want to at least clear one leg? I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see the ability of Simon on the ground here. Um, and we haven't seen Teodoros on his back very much, so I'm not not, not sure where his level of jujitsu is. We saw oh, Simon the pass right there. Easily, now getting into side control. Um, he's looking to get the head down. I was just going to say, should he not have an underhook there on the other side? Because it's going it, to obviously right. Teodoros is able to escape without it. Right, and, and I don't, and from what I've seen so far, I'm not seeing he's been showing a lot of aptitude on the ground. Taking the back now, yep. trying to get the hooks in there. We've got one on this side here. We got two hooks in there. He's flattening him out. He's, oh yeah. Simon really needs to get those hooks in deeper and, and flatten out Theodore, so not let him get up. Theodore's is really covering up right here. <laughs> Simon needs to really kind of flatten Theodore out of here and not let him get out from this position. He's going for the choke. Yeah. Oh, he's got full mount yeah, here. Full mount. But I don't know that he's going to be able to finish with this. Theodore has to explode off, off this. this he's trying. You think really he's trying really to set bad. up an armbar here? Nope. No. No. He's he not, just wants to worry about an armbar at all. <laughs> that is not even coming into his head. 
Yeah, if, if Theodores isn't able to get him off his chest, I, I, I don't see this fight going well. Well, he just attempted to bridge there, but he yep. didn't trap one side. Yep. Yeah, he's just trying to just set some distance here. He's there just jumping go. from the frying pan into the fire right now. Yep. Well, no, if he, can get, if he can get his hips up and get up and get out the back door, it's possible. I haven't seen Simon really doing a great job of controlling him. So you're talking about the actual spin as we have two minutes left potentially in this fight here. You're talking about the spin, spin, and once your opponent gets off to that diagonal well, side, as, as you come across. Right here, yeah. This position that we're in right now with Kadoris, if he's able to jack his hips up and come out through the back, I think that'd be the best situation. This is awful. He can't be flattened out in this position, especially with a larger man on top. He's really, really going to have an issue. Here Simon's on top, and this again, this is this is a huge advantage to the larger man. You have 20 extra pounds on top. Um, You're moving a lot more mass. A lot more mass. It's just going to suck the air right out of it. So we are seeing the inexperience of Theodorus on the ground. He has now. just over a minute. He's got to figure this out. He's got to get out or he will not be advancing in this tournament. As Simon Bayor, since this fight has been down to the ground, right. has absolutely been dominant. He right. is looking right now for some sort of choke more of the trachea than actually a blood choke trying to make him pass out. And now he's right. back to, er, to the ground. And yeah, really, you know, Simon, he's, these, these blows are obviously hurting him, but I, I don't know that they're going to be finishing blows. Again, back on his back. He's not sticking the, the hooks all the way in, and getting his feet in to flatten Simon out, or to flatten Theodorus out. 35 seconds left to go here for Theodorus Axiolis to do something. He's got to go for the finish here because as it stands right now, if this fight goes the distance, Simon Bayor from Poland will advance and represent his country in the Sai Games presents Ryzen Fighting Openweight right. Grand Prix 2016. Yeah, really, all Simon has to do at this point is just kind of coast out, just keep throwing some shots. Just keep your talking about. Okay, at the back door. He's got 10 seconds to do something. He's got to get a knockout. Can he do it? Simon needs to get those hands up. If I was in this corner, I'd be just telling him to circle away. Yeah. Dominant performance from Simon Bayora. Definitely a dominant performance, but believe it or not, uh, and I can tell you about drills that you do at the gym sometimes, working ground and pound, you can actually get fatigued yourself trying <laughs> to finish an opponent pounding and pounding away. Look at him. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, it's not easy. It's not <laughs> but we, we didn't really see him in the ability to finish. Uh, Teodoros on his back there. And here we go. We see some exchanges up top. Now, not the most technical exchange right there, but he eventually does get the takedown, the takedown and it was corner. basically the beginning of the end no, for Teodoros Axiolis' night here. Yeah, and Simon, you know, once he got on top, he didn't. we didn't see him really work for any submissions other than the uh, slightly attempted rear naked choke. He didn't do a really good job of flattening Teodoros out um, or moving into side control. Yeah, here we go. It's kind of a weak attempt at a choke. Um, he wasn't going to get it. But, you know, ground I and like pound. this position, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> ground, I mean, ground if and you want to do some damage to someone's face, yeah. obviously getting in the half choke, making sure that other arm isn't able to defend it, and you can just keep going. Or get the referee stopped. There we go. Yeah, I mean, Simon Bayor from Poland advances in the side games presents Rise and Fighting World Grand Prix 2016. Obviously a dejected Theodorus Oxtiolis was expecting much more from himself, was doing his best in the stand-up realm, but once that fight got down to the ground, he right. it was game over. And I think right here you just see the main advantage I say with Simon's size and his weight. Once he was able to get on top, Theodorus didn't really have an answer to it. Um, I don't know that Simon's, I didn't see a lot of fantastic wrestling or ground control either. I think if Theodorus had a little bit more experience on the ground, he could have gotten up in several situations or reversed, but uh, definitely the fight goes to the bigger man in this situation. I know there's many, many people out there sometimes that often laugh, how can a fighter get tired when he's in mount trying to finish an opponent? And I tell them all the time, try it. Yeah. Try it. Get a heavy bag. Put the heavy bag on the ground. Put some gloves oh, on. Sure. 
and go full tilt. Time yourself. It is exhausting. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely is. And, and that's why knowing how to finish opponent in a dominant position is so important. You don't want to waste the opportunities when you receive them. I'm not going to lie to you. I love these hammer fists. This is Shogun. Oh. Shogun special here. Back Fantastic. In if I'm not mistaken, Paulo Fugo used to use it. The hammer fists are fantastic. Fantastic weapon. There was a time early in the world of mixed martial arts where the hammer fists were laughed at. 